Hi, I'm Reed Pierce. Welcome to Straight Pool, the podcast brought to you by the Pro Billiards Tour. We're in Norfolk, Virginia at the International Open Nine Ball Championship. I'm here along with my friend Kim Davenport and also Earl Strickland, one of the greatest players ever. If he is not the greatest player ever, I don't know who he is. What do you think, Kim? Well, I know I've known Earl since uh, 1981. When I first left California, I went to Texas looking for Earl. And it's a good thing I didn't find him because I wouldn't have had any money left. And uh, we got together one night and went out drinking. And uh, I don't remember this, but he said we went to the Spindle Top downtown Houston and uh, I started sliding in the snow. Was I drinking that much? No, it was uh, the most un unbelievable thing. It snowed that night, which it rarely snows in Houston. And it snowed that night a couple of inches. And uh, after you and I were in the Spindle Top Hotel, we came down and got in your Lincoln. And we drove and we saw a big parking lot and you went out spinning around in circles. It was unreal. Well, I, I was a young man then. So Earl, uh, like, like Reed said earlier, you are probably the greatest nine ball tournament player of all time. There's no doubt. I mean, so many world championships, so many titles. I can't, uh, I can't explain how many. But what do you think is wrong with pool today, if anything? Well, you guys are being too kind when you keep saying I'm the best player. I, I just, no. I just want to say I'm a great player, that's for sure, and I'm still in the game. But the game today has uh, certainly uh, changed quite a bit from our, from my time of playing years ago. When you were playing, and you also read, uh, the players got slower. <laughs> <laughs> slower than me? <laughs> uh, I don't know what it is. I want to kill the guy when I'm playing him. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, the. Cloth has changed, obviously. You guys saw a little bit of that in 1984, you know, yeah. before you guys went out of the game. And uh, the cloth has changed a lot. And the pool balls, there's, there's an interesting thing that's happened that I don't think you guys know about. They made the pool ball bigger in the last 20 years than it, is, than it was. Are you serious? Than it was back in 1980 or 1975 or, yeah. So... I think, and I was trying to figure out why we're not running as many racks as we used to. Back, you remember, I remember one time Bowman was playing Varner. Bowman ran eight racks, and Varner got up and ran eight racks. You don't see that anymore. You know, it's 16 racks in two innings. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I've noticed, too, uh, being here and, and watching, and since I've been out of pool for a long time, but it seems like they're just, they're, they don't have that big, long, wide stroke anymore. They just kind of punch the ball and slide the cue ball over and slide the ball over, you well, know, not, not a lot of twirling going around the table. I'm the only one still doing that. Well, <laughs> I, I still think that's the most exciting way to play uh, nine ball. That's just my opinion. There, the cloth is allowing them to not have to use more bridges now, you know, the cloth. And uh, I think the pool balls may be better or something. I don't know. I can't. Sometimes I think, still think the Centennials were better pool balls than these you know always we've always said that right yeah. centennial pool balls but you got to remember like that what i said a minute ago i think the ball's a little bit bigger than it used to be so and if you date back to the 1800s the pool ball was as big as it is now where it for a year about 50 years there i think the ball was smaller <laughs> right so well, let me ask you this girl um the shot clock the jump stick um in my opinion, uh, the pool needs something to get it going. Something's got to, we got to have something to get it going as far as, uh, uh, you know, speed the game up. I'm in here watching. I know I was a slow player, but any time I ever got a chance back in the day and I got on the clock, I played better. Fans want to see something fast, in my opinion, where the player is under pressure. Tell us about it. Tell us uh, the jump well, stick I, and the know, shot clock. What do you I, think? I've emphasized over and over and over, and I've explained myself enough. But I'm actually getting tired of explaining myself. These people think I'm some kind of big crybaby or something. You know what I mean? I, I ain't no crybaby. I want to play faster, just like you said. And uh, they, want to, they want to play slow and take you out of your game. That's basically what it is. And uh, I think the shot clock should be 20 seconds. I think that's a comfortable uh, time, time enough to shoot the shot and think just a little bit. I think you should be under a lot of pressure, almost panicking when you're shooting m most shots. Let me ask you this, like uh, for an extension, do you think one extension per game? Absolutely not. No extensions? I think it should be like a football game. You get, you know, you get four timeouts every half. 
Great idea. You know, I love so, that. I love so, that. So, you know, a guy's got to utilize the timeouts right. in football at the right time. And if he if he uses them all up, and then in the end of the game, he needs a timeout, he's going to lose the game. Unbelievable, Earl. Unbelievable so thought. The same, thought thing, the same thing should be applied in pull. You should get probably three timeouts in a match, and that's it. I agree with you, Earl. And use them wisely. No question. More, more than one, I, I do believe. There's only one right now. Exactly. Yeah, but he's saying he should get no, four it. timeouts per match. I mean, extensions per match, and now he's got to utilize them when you want them, no, right? They want to give you a timeout every game. I know, but every game. Yeah, yeah right. That's, that's but I'm good, saying no. you're saying that you want to you want to have four uh, extensions per match. Yeah. That way, he has to be able to utilize them. And you know, we can't, just, say, about you can't right. just you know get a. Get I said a, three, I, exactly. four. I'll give you one more. Right. <laughs> right. I don't think there should be any. To tell you the truth, according to me, and you know what? I'll tell you now. If there was a 20 second shot clock, it's going to get me too. You know, there's times I'm going to look like an idiot, too. But I still think it would be more epic if we could make it where the player has to be under way more pressure. Say he doesn't even know what to do, he's got 20 seconds to shoot. That's a lot of pressure. Yeah, and I, and I liked it back in the day uh, when we used to play three out of five sets, race to five. I always thought the pressure was on the player all the time, no matter what the score was. Well, that was only one format, Kim, if you remember. That was a world tournament. That was when well, the it, WPA it was. first started. Well, and, and you won it two years in a row. And I think it helped me win the event those yeah. two years. And I'm the only guy to win it back to back since. And, and you might have won it three years in a row. If it wasn't for you. And I didn't win the tournament. Yeah. <laughs> he beat me 15 to 1. He played unbelievable. Uh, well, Kim's beat a lot of got a good memory. He beat me 15 to 1. It was unreal. I, I was lucky to get the one game. But uh, going back to that, uh, I think about that a lot, the format. And no one has won that event twice in a row since I've won it. Right. So, and I think the format has a lot to do with it. That format protected me. And they keep changing. I mean, I, I don't know why when something seemed to work. I always thought it was it worked. Two out of or three out of five sets, just like tennis. It didn't work for the TV. Remember you said that. Well, and that's why they shorten your match to race to eleven, and it causes you to lose, probably. Yeah. Well, that's a possibility, but I, I got beat by a better player in that. Let match. me ask you this, Earl. All the players that are out here today and comparing them back to when we were playing uh, back in the 80s and the 90s and early 2000s. What, I mean, are these guys better? No, absolutely not. And I don't think uh, the players are any better in golf than they were 80 years ago. You know what right. I mean? I've seen a lot of golfers in my day too. I've been watching golf since I was born. My dad played golf, now I play golf. He taught me everything about golf and, and I know a lot about the players. And I still say the players from a long time ago in golf are better than they are today. These guys today, the club's helping them a lot. A lot of things are going on here too, exa exactly the same. These sticks they're playing with today are, are much in comparison to the way golf is right now with the club it's enhancing the shots, the distance. The same thing's going on in pool right now. So the technology, They've changed a lot of the technology, the technology and the really taken over. Then is what you're phenolic saying. Phenolic is a big thing. Phenolic is carbon now. That's and, what they make the pool balls out. Phenolic the, resin. And right. the tips are, are are a little bit jacked up. You know, the tips are are more powerful now. And so a lot of the same policies have gone on in pool that went on in golf. The only thing is, we're not at their money, you know, status. You know what I mean? We don't have any money. But yeah, pool, well, pool's a great game. It we're here at the International Open, and you're still in the tournament. And you, yeah. you are probably the oldest player in this tournament. I'm the oldest guy left. I beat the, the oldest, old, guy, I, I beat the oldest guy in the tournament. He was 77. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, it's great to see you uh, playing well, and you're still in the tournament. And I know you can still play because I watched some of your match. And it's, I agree. He's you can playing. still run out. You're really it, playing it, good. It's really amazing. You know, I'm still not comfortable as I used to be. I, I feel like everybody's against me. <laughs> I don't know why. I mean, in golf, I would be cherished. I would be relished. But in pool, they want you to die. Right. They, right. They, no one likes lose pool. In pool, you hate losing more in pool than any, any game I've ever seen. Well, Earl, you know what? This is all I'm going to say. You're, in my opinion, I've, in my time, and I think in anybody's era, you're the greatest. And I'm not just saying it because we're here on set. Yeah. You're the greatest nine ball player ever, t tournament player for sure. They want to see you lose because you're the greatest. Always think about this. They want to see the greatest player always fail. Think about I it in any sport pretty much. I still and think I, I think it's wrong though. 
I still think I'm a better straight pole player. You guys never seen me play straight pole. No, I haven't. I haven't. I never yeah. seen. Yeah, I've seen you play. I'm gonna tell you where I'm good in straight pole. I'm sitting in a chair. The guy's been shooting and dicking me around for an hour and ten minutes, pinpoint and everything. Not really shooting, just <laughs> just mind screwing me, right? And I'm waiting to kill him. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. It's all I'm waiting for is him to make a mistake, and I'm gonna jump up and slaughter him. <laughs> it's happened many times, and I can run. 100 balls in 28 minutes. I've counted, I've clocked myself many times. And I still say straight pull is the game we should be playing. This game is luck. You can get beat by a woman. You can get beat, beat, get beat by a cab driver. You can get beat by a walking, a working stiff. A guy walk down the street might be able to play a little bit. He can beat you. you know, so if he gets a few rolls. So, you know, we got to make, I think it should be straight pull. Uh, Offensive straight pull, no defense, okay? Every time I miss, you just start running balls. You pick a break ball and you start running them. And everything. when you miss, I pick a break ball and I start running them. You're on a 20 second shot clock. And uh, if I run the rack fast, if I, and you, you play, you play uh, innings, you, you run 42 balls, you gotta stop. Then I run 42, we're tied. But if I ran the 42 faster than you, I'm awarded one extra point. I got 43, you got 42. So it just moves the game just a little I love bit quicker. It. I don't want a guy to even milk a 20 second shot clock. You understand? You have all the, you know, in my opinion, Earl Strickland has some great ideas. He's came on set here and talked with me and Kim Davenport about some things and he's brought up some points that I've never thought about. I don't know about you, Kim, but I've never thought about it. Few of the things talking about the four timeouts throughout the match. You, you couldn't, you, you don't have an extent or it, extensions. Uh, that's a great idea. What you just said about the straight pull, you run the balls faster, you get rewarded yeah. more. Unbelievable ideas. Let me ideas say one more out. thing you're, you're about the straight pull. I think we could reach a broader audience playing straight pull. It's a harder game. It takes longer to learn it. And you're never in control like nine ball. Right. Nine, guy gets to break in and making a few balls every time, he's got you. Yeah. Well, let me you ask you a question because you said earlier, you said, Nine ball is lucky, but how come the same players seem to keep winning? Because they're the lucky. Over and so, <laughs> yeah, so they're just they're just luckier than the other but 120. I'm, I'm going to be honest yeah. with you. I wasn't lucky. You, you, you wasn't lucky. I was. I'm going to tell you where you know a lot of people said, "Oh, I had a great break. Oh, I did That's this." Funny. I'm going to tell you what I really, really studied my entire life was being the best shot maker. And you were. And I was the best shot you were. maker. That's, that's, that's fact. a fact. I'm agreeing hey, with I'm you. I'm agreeing that with me, too. Well, I'm, I'm not, that's I almost want to so, argue with him, but I can't. You better not. You better not. Well, let me ask you one more thing. I beat you 11 not one time, too. You remember that, don't you? Yeah, you, you ain't never beat you me. You never got that. You never beat me 11 nothing, but you beat me quite a few times. But let me ask you one more thing. I don't know. I hope you'll, you'll get into this a little bit with me. But tell me this. I've watched the uh, players that are playing today from America. We're talking about American players only. A lot of you know, there's a lot of great American players out there. I'm, I'm not still good players. There's yeah. a lot of good players. What is going on? Why do we not have the players like when we were out there? The, you know, because we could fill a bunch of players. You know, you go down the line, you could list 25 great players that were in the air when you, you know, when I was out there from 90 to say early 2000s or even back in the 80s. There, you could come up with 25 players. Why don't we have that? Well, uh, I think pool in America is in a lost era again. There was a lost era from 1970 to 1980. That's the last time I saw the lost era. Now a little bit in the uh, 2000s when it went into a serious recession, depression actually, uh, couldn't rub two nickels together for about 10 years there, or eight, ten, eight, five or six at least. But now I think pool is in another, has been in a uh, lost era it's called. And, uh, it's starting to come out of it because we've got juniors. They're starting to you know, develop some more junior players. And one day you'll see the players will be developed from non-gambling backgrounds. That's what's coming next. So, and that's what will clean the game up. The gambling's holding the game back. You can believe it or not. Yeah, we've always had a bad image about gambling. So, you know, go to the pool and gamble. And yeah. on the movies, you always see it. The right. bad guys are in the billiard room. And, we need and, to change that image. Yeah, in the billiard room nowadays, they're really clean. They're like lobbies of uh, yeah. hotels. I mean, they're very clean and nice. No more cement floors or none of that. You know what I mean? But you're, you're right. The junior, I think the junior and the non-gambling 
you know, and hopefully I'm still alive to see it where the players can actually make a living playing pool. And that's what we're trying to do at the Pro Billiards Tour. We're trying to help everybody. So, you know, Earl, I'll tell you what, buddy, you're, you're an amazing player. And, well, uh, I have a broad imagination about my game. Yes, you know, I, I didn't have any imagination when I started. I was just a good player, born to play, you know? Right. And uh, you saw me from the time I was a kid. Oh, yeah. You know, 18 years old. Yeah. When I, I met you. I well, was 18. About 40 I years. Actually, 19 or 20. Uh, anyway. Anyway, uh, but going back to, uh, I, I come from a gambling background. Reed does, and so does Kim. We all three come from, we're not going to lie about it. We right. come from gambling backgrounds. But we know if the game is ever going to go to that next level, we have to clean it up a little bit. The players have to learn to play and love the game the way I did. You know, I still love pool the same way I did when I first shot my first game. It's just like I had to get out of that little town and gambling was the only way out, you know? And that was the way of life then. And that was the only way I was taught. But the players today can be taught different. And I think it's very important. Well, with all the junior leagues, see, that was our, that was our college. That was our schooling, going out and gambling. You know, that's how we got seasoned and become better. Yeah. So, but nowadays with the junior leagues and everything, I think it's very important. And, well, and, I wish, and right I wish that America out. could get it back rolling. I think they can. You know, I'm not trying to say, we do have some really good players still. I'm not trying to say that at all. I don't want anybody to think I said that. I just was saying we had way more really top players back in the 90s through the two, or 80s through 2000. And, but I think America can turn this around. If you get guys like Earl Strickland involved with the juniors, and move forward. Uh, I'm really hoping and praying that we can get this turned around because it's, you know, it's a great sport and uh, we need to we need to be positive. Everybody out there talking on social media, downgrading the American players in any way, shape, form, in my opinion, need to stay away from that because I'm not doing it. I believe in these guys. Maybe one of them can win it. I'm pulling for you, Earl. You Hopefully know, you can win this tournament. You can. You know, I, know I you was can. talking about different games and uh, like I said, nine balls never going to determine who the best player is. I promise you. I still think straight pull is the best game. And if you look back to Moscone, if you just think back, just running into him, and you know, he never would talk to me. He was scared to death of me, <laughs> I think. I, I, would, I wouldn't but, be too. Uh, he I, would was never, sc I scared to death of you too. I would say something to him, he would, wouldn't say a word. No. So listen, so, uh, but Moscone, if you remember now, hated nine ball, he hated one pocket, he hated eight ball, he hated snooker, he hated billiards. He didn't like nothing but straight pull. And he knew, he knew that straight pull was the only game for a professional pull. And when they stopped playing it in 1951, or the, they stopped playing on the five by 10, actually we need to go back to the five by 10 and pick up where they left off. They stopped playing on the five by 10 and forced him to go to a four and a half by nine where he was dominating. You understand? What if you walked up to Jack Nicholas in 1960 something when he was dominating and said, you're done playing golf, you're gonna play putt putt. That's what it was like. Moscone was so bitter over what they did to his life and his career, he could never be the same. He never lended himself to us because he hated those games. And I don't blame him one bit. And he's turned over in his grave. I'll tell you that right now with all this hoopla. I'll tell you the truth. We need to go back to straight pull, make it a sport. Women and children can't beat you in that game. You understand? Cab drivers cannot beat you in straight pull. It's a very intelligent game, I promise you. And no one controls it. That's the game. Speaking of Willie Moscone, I played you in the finals out in Los Angeles uh, in 1984. He was there and I beat It was the, the Willie finals. Moscone Open. Me and Earl played in the finals and Earl played the most brilliant match I've ever seen. He beat me like 11 to 3 or 11 yep. to 2. I was lucky to get a game or two. Yeah, I played And perfect. Willie never was sitting there and never, he never smiled, Listen, he never clapped, he never did anything. This is a good, I'm glad you brought that up. He, he, he the score was Actually, this is what happened. The score was five to five, and I ran six and out on you. That's exactly what happened. I beat you. Well, your times. memory's better than no, mine. No, I got. I know exactly what happened. It's five five, and I ran six straight racks. And I said, I wonder what Willie thinks about that. And I looked over at Willie, and he was asleep. <laughs> Gosh, Amani. 
But that's how little he cared about nine ball. He, he didn't think good, nine man. ball was a great game. He wanted to go back to the five by 10 where they, where they cut him off in 1951. Well, I don't blame him for that. If he, he was dominating, he, well, I mean, he was the greatest straight ball player of all time, as far as I'm concerned. Well, if, if someone would have came along than you in the middle of your career and told you you had to go play on a bar table right now and you could never play on a four and a half by, you were a great four and a half by nine player, it yeah. would hurt you, it would, it would upset yeah. you. Yeah, yes it would. Yeah, no doubt. Well, I mean, it's been unbelievable Earl, to be able to yeah. uh, see you again. Thanks uh, again, You know Reed. what? I hadn't seen you in a long time. And, it's good uh, to you're see the same you. guy that I knew a long yeah. time ago. An unbelievable player, man. I'm glad to have much. you on the I show. I just got a little more wrinkles. <laughs> no. Early. God bless you, Reed. You got it, Earl. You too, Nice Ken. seeing you again, God buddy. God bless you, man. Thank you, uh, guys, for uh, tuning in. ProBeersTour.com. Go online, YouTube, and uh, subscribe. Thank you for joining us. The greatest nine ball player to ever live, Earl Strickland, my counterpart, Kim Davenport, the Hall of Famer. Thank y'all.